Welcome to The Daily Dish with New York Times bestselling author, Leanne Ely. Putting vibrancy back into your everyday life and feeding your heart, mind, body, and soul. Join us every day at 1 p.m. Eastern for Motivational Monday, Tuesday's Tip, Wise Woman's Wednesday, Thirsty Thursday, Food Fight Friday, and of course, Q&A, where no question is off limits, and Soulful Saturday. Here is your host, Leanne Ely and The Daily Dish. Is it just me or does that music get you going? <laughs> hey, happy Soulful Saturday, y'all. Glad you're here. Come on down. Who is in the house? We got Marianne, Sarah, and Doris so far winning that race. Come on down. By the way, if you are in the Hot Melt Sprint Group, do take a peek see at Sarah's epic post. It was wonderful. And I mean, ding, ding, ding. Give the girl... <laughs> Give her her credit. I mean, she she got off the carousel of crazy. That's what it's all about. So I want you to go read that post. It's it's important. Um, number two is we got all kinds of things happening. <laughs> you know, did you see uh, that we are getting ready to do the food addiction webinar again by popular demand? It's happening this that uh, Thursday. You can get your signs self signed up for it. This is really crucial. Because, you know, I, I think, no, I did not tell you this. I told um, I told Jenny and um, Corey this, that we were talking about, uh, <laughs> I was talking about soul damaging things. And I accidentally, I shouldn't say accidentally, I did this on purpose. I watched um, my 600 pound life and I was horrified at what I saw. Um, First of all, because it's just so train wrecky and it's just so de dehumanizing. So um, this is something that I, I, I saw was they never addressed this woman's what she really needed, which was understanding what her food addiction was about. It was basically like saying, stop drinking less booze to an alcoholic. It was the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. I was so angry that, well, here I am telling you all about it, right? <laughs> Anyway, I just want to say hello to Catherine, to Jocelyn, to Helen, of course, and Mary Ann is here in the house. Good to see you. Um, grateful that you're here. And you know, if you if things make you mad and you see things and you call it out, we have to call things out for what they are because you know we we have to address all of who we are, or we get nowhere. We know this. This is what the carousel of crazy is. This is how we get off of it, right? That's what we're about. So anyway, that's what the show is about. It's the Daily Dish. We help bring vibrancy back into your life, heart, mind, body, and soul every day. That's what we do because we recognize who you are, a whole woman, not just a little itsy bitsy part, you know? And when we're just focused on that one little itsy bitsy part, we don't get the rest of us taken care of. No wonder we find ourselves in this place of the carousel of crazy. It's nutty, completely nutty. Our quote decks are going to be back in the shop on Tuesday. You can go get it right now and wait till you see the design. All new quotes, all new design, all new everything. Go to savingdinner.com forward slash quote and go take a peek. See, hi, Denise. Good to see you. And there's my girl, Mary, Susan. Hello. I'm so glad you're here. Gwen's here too. And so's Linda. Well, so the people that I miss, I get to see over here on this side. Yep. Ah, oh, Catherine, I'm so glad. Catherine said she had a long walk from um, my encouragement. Well, you know, I'm going to encourage everybody to move. Um, this is how we get the endorphins going. And this is how we get to the place of, you know, starting to feel better. And that's part of it, right? That's a journey thing. L-glutamine is our supplement of the week. And you can take it just like this in this little powder. It's an amino acid. Put it right, tongues, gums. <laughs> teeth. It cuts off the craving like that. You know why it does? There's a part in the center, the pleasure center of your brain is just, you know, that's our addicted part. We all are have some kind of thing that we're addicted to, or we go to seeking comfort. What do you think comfort food's all about? What do you think booze is all about or gambling or compulsive shopping? They're all doing the same thing. This cuts it off. 
And this is a real tool in our toolbox. And if you buy RL glutamine, which you can find at savingdinner.com forward slash show, you can also get, it's just this simple, a whole bunch of recipes that are going to support your hot melt sprint. They're all sprint approved recipes and there's a ton of them. Listen, part of, part of doing this is not being bored. I don't want you bored. I want you on fire for this. And part of being on fire is having food that tastes good, right? I can't, you know, we, we get all wrapped up in our food and everything like that. And, and I, it's nice to not be so food centric, but it's nice to sit down to a d delicious meal. Am I right? Check it out at savingdinner.com forward slash show. we got tons of new recipes. It will light you up, right? And this is, what is day six of the sprint? So we have today and we have tomorrow. Hold fast. Hold fast on Monday. And don't forget, you weigh, you measure, and all of a sudden you're going to just see things happen. You know, I was going, my bra's getting a little loose. I just did a little measurement. I'm down three inches in my band size. Three inches. Come on. That's awesome. But I'm not seeing it on the scale as much as I'm seeing it with my little tape measure. So do like Leanne does. Measure yourself. It'll light you up. It's so much fun. Uh, your purse pouch. You want me to make an L-glutamine purse pouch? <laughs> yeah, it is kind of tragic carrying around a little baggie full of white powder. God help you if you get pulled over by the cops for speeding. They're going to say what? Oh, there maybe there is a reason you're speeding. <laughs> we don't want that. Um, Get Strong, Be Strong was on Monday. We uh, was this week. You can watch the webinar and join us and get the guide and whatever. We start on Monday. And the whole thing I'm saying, I just told you that three inches. What do you think that's from? Doing the strength training. That's what it's from. I'm really focused on the fitness and the food is helping me to get there. Duh. That's the way it's supposed to be. When we're focused on our fitness, we get the vibrancy back. We're stronger. We have more endurance. We have more energy. This is working. This is phenomenal. Three inches. Come on. That just blew me away. Um, PJ Party has been moved to Saturday, April 3rd. We had to because Mark surprised me with a trip. And what are you going to say? Oh, no, can't go PJ Party. You know, no. You don't do that. You say, okay, let's go. Uh, we're calling this our doggy moon because the dog is coming on April 2nd. You're going to see my pup. On April 3rd, you will see my puppy. His name is Lincoln. And I just can't wait for him to be here. So go get registered for it. It's free, of course. Bring your own beverage. Bring some cute jammies. We're going to have a contest. Savingdinner.com forward slash PJs, PJS, to get going. Yes. Weights are helping your strength, says Linda. Weights are helping my strength. And you know what I just had to buy? I had to buy bigger weights because what I was using was just like, no, nah, this is nothing. You got nothing on me. I need some strong manly weights or womanly weights, right? So the food addiction webinar, how to get signed up, savingdinner.com forward slash freedom. Isn't that good? That's Jenny's idea for the tag, you know, because the freedom thing, freedom's everything, isn't it? How to get away from the things that hold you back from your life, the prison of addiction. It's everything. And this, to me, it's like I go back to that whole thing that I said about that stupid TLC show. I will never watch it again. I want to write, write every single one of those women and tell them to come into our group. We'll help them and we'll love them up. They need love, not shame. I was so disgusted. And just the way they, they handle these poor women. They're human beings. They deserve love. We all do. Here's our new quote of the week. Life becomes easier when you learn to accept an apology you never got. <laughs> Stop the presses. This is the same guy who said um, something about, you know, reveling in the small things. Because small things are really the big things. Can't remember. His name is Robert Brault. He's still alive. And he is kind of a philosopher and a freelance writer and all of it. And I just really love this quote because, you know, we have to get beyond needing an apology all the time. We have to get beyond all of this. And what I have found is that this whole forgiveness thing is kind of a cycle and it can be a treadmill. And the when we go past forgiveness and into radical acceptance of 
you know, we can't change any of this. Then we can drop it like a hot potato. Drop it. What do you think of that? I don't want to live with that weight on my heart. I don't want to live with that thing in the back of my mind. Radical acceptance. That's the thing. So Q&A is always on Friday, as you know. Just send in your questions to support at savingdinner.com. Question for Leanne on Friday. I will answer it. And who was there for Hot Milk Happy Hour? We're probably going to change it, you know, to an evening thing. It's in our Hot Milk Sprint group because we've had some people ask. But if you want anything, you know, if you have this, if you're pinky up, yes, I want it in the evening. Pinky up if you want it in the evening. I want to see in the comments how many people have that, you know, in their thing. Like, yeah, do it in the evenings. Be better. Um, Sarah, absolutely. Resentment is a heavy load when we don't need to, that we don't need to carry. We don't need to carry, you know, we, ever. We don't. We get to let go of that stuff. Radical acceptance will do that. Okay, evening would be awesome, says Sarah. Anyone else? Says Jane. Yep, there's her pinkies. There come my pinky girls. Same with Catherine. Okay, okay. Done deal, done deal, done deal. And right behind, underneath me, I'm like CNN right now. <laughs> Look underneath me. What do you see? It's a reminder that Full Bloom is a happening on Saturday, April 24th. It's an all day affair. Can I just say all day? And guess what happens then? We're going to go into the weeds of being enough. The theme this year is I am enough. And I'm telling you, I'm bawling my eyes out as I'm, as I'm preparing for this, because I'm preparing for it right now, bawling my eyes out. Because these are things we need in our, in every part of us. It is a must attend event. And I want you there. Because this is this is where we start. It's our starting place. You know, there's a lot there, isn't there? There's a lot there that we have to process constantly. But we don't have to be held back by feeling we're not enough. This is what this conference is all about. I am allowed. No, Mark is not allowed to surprise you with a trip on April 24th. Wouldn't that be tragic? Well, you're going to want to be there because... Guess who's in charge? Amber is in charge of our swag bag, and it is on point. Let me tell you, we've just finalized everything for it. Everything's been ordered. You will get a swag bag in the mail that's going to delight you, just like being, you know, it's like a gift. It is a gift. And then you're also going to get some virtual goodies that we have. I want all of it. All of it, all of it. Jane says, I don't want to be in my jammies and drinking wine during the day. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that, Jane. <laughs> Marguerite's already in for full bloom. Yes, 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 yes. We're excited about that. Anyway, so today we're going to be talking about like getting into the whole the whole thing about your soul and and feeding it and the hunger that we all, we all have soul hunger. All of us do. I don't care who you are. You know, maybe you think you've got it wired. I got corrected today um, <laughs> for something that I said and and they said no this is blah 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 and I said I felt like saying well for you you know don't tell me what to think don't tell me what to believe don't tell me and correct me allow for my my enoughness right dang <laughs> I am enough but I do accept gifts same here um Vanessa I'm glad you're here I'm so glad you're here so we are with our deep soul hunger comes our search for meaning, you know, always, and comes our search for our purpose and comes our search for making a difference in this life. I mean, that's, that is honest to God, that's in our DNA. It's part of who we are. But you know what? You have your own recipe to make, just like I do, just like every other person does. And who are you to dictate and to translate how they're to do it? Who are you to go in there and say, no, 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 you can't put time in that recipe. It's got to be rosemary. No one is. You know, we all have the ability to be flexible with our recipes. You know, it's one of the reasons I don't like baking. Well, besides the fact of what, you, what do you get after you bake? <laughs> you know, stuff that does, I don't need. But also it's, it's more precision. You know, there's less creativity there. I could have when I'm sauteing in a pan, I, I just need some liquid. 
could be wine, it can be broth, <laughs> you know, it can be a number of different things. I love that flexibility. And in my life and in your life, we all have the soul hunger and how you feed that is up to you. What feeds your soul might not feed mine. So you don't have, you know, you don't get to dictate how that looks to me. I don't get to dictate how it looks to you. I would just want to tell you, it's okay to feed it. It's okay to feed it. So this is, this is how all of this works. This is how all of this works because the feeding of the soul is very individual. Um, I told you on Friday on Food Fight, Fight Friday where we do our Q&As and, you know, I just want you to try sauerkraut. I'm never going to shove sauerkraut down your throat and say you've got to eat it because it's a fermented food. But if you don't try it, how do you know it's not right for you, right? We all have different tastes and that's okay. I love that because it makes us all so flexible. The only time that I ever stand my ground is with real food when it comes to things. And, and also with carbohydrates, if you've got a waist greater than 35 inches, your body's telling you something. That's chemistry. It's not me dictating anything. It's just chemistry. It's simple biological fact, right? So here we are in this place trying to figure out our path, isn't it? One of the things we have to start with is, and you guys know this, we're all here, is that we're all fearfully and wonderfully made. All, every single one of us. But we didn't come out of the same stamp. We all have different uniqueness. I mean, we don't all look alike, right? We don't have the same color of skin, eyes. We, not all of us have freckles and dimples. Not all of us are five foot seven. Not all of us are the same, born in the same country have the same thoughts, the same tastes, loving the same colors. None of us, none of us. So everything about you is, is so fearfully and wonderfully made. This uniqueness requires a very personal approach. You get to customize it. You get to be the one who says, I don't like that. I don't want that. Get that out of my life. I, I want this instead. And you know what I say to you? Bless your heart. And I mean that in the positive way, not in the dismissive Southern way. I mean, bless your heart. You're finding your unique recipe. You get to be the soul builder. You get to be the creator of your own life. You get to be the queen of your own life. This is how we do it. Not by asking someone else to do it for us, but to take the bull by the horns and say, I'm doing this. This is my life. Right, not my recipe, not my kitchen, not my my clowns, not my circus, not my circus, not my clowns, not, you know, we get to make so many decisions. This is the one decision I don't want you to get weary of making. I want you to look inside. I want you to see the capacity that you have for making these beautiful decisions that are going to impact your entire life. This is how we feed our souls. So we're soul hungry, all of us, right? Can I just get an amen on that? Isn't it the truth? We all are. We have to feed our souls because honestly, what are our souls? Except that's who we are. We have these body suits that just take us around. It's a car. That's it. But our souls, our souls are everything. And we get to feed them and we get to nurture them. We get to nourish them. We, we get to do it. What a divine privilege that is. Do you see that? That's incredible. And we all hotly desire purpose because otherwise, why are we here? I mean, honestly, why are we here otherwise? We get to be the creator of that. We get to, we, we get to line ourselves up with our meaning, with our belief systems, with everything. And the only thing is that we have to do is it's got to click with you. You can't go and be force fed. I watched a movie, I can't remember what it was. It was about um, the suffragettes, which by the way, what these women went through to get our rights that we now enjoy as women, unbelievable. One of the women, and I, I'm not sure which one it was, but it was Hillary something. I can't remember the name of the actress, but her name is Hillary and it's not Duff. <laughs> Hillary Swank, that's it. Um, they showed her being force fed um, so that she, you know, and, and in jail and in the dark and all of that. And Woodrow Wilson, what a jerk, by the way. I don't like that president. <laughs> I mean, that was seriously, he would not listen to women. And just so they could have equal rights to vote and to have a voice 
you know, and, and if God forbid they should get a divorce back, then their children were taken away from them. So it, I mean, the way it was dark ages time, this is over a hundred years ago, but dark ages, and they forced a woman to, you know, force fed her. Nobody should be force fed. It's up to you to feed yourself with the food you like, the nourishment that you need, and a soul, your soul connection. That's all up to you because when it clicks in, it clicks in. And, you know, I'm going to just say this because this happens so often, especially with women, is we crowdsource it. Well, what do you think? What do you think I should do? How do you think I should live my life? How, what do you think my beliefs should be? I mean, not quite so direct, but that's essentially what we're doing. We don't rely enough on ourselves. We don't give ourselves enough credence and our own opinions have enough weight in our lives. Do you see the disconnect there? It's gigantic. So the call on our lives is very much connected to our worth, very much connected to our purpose, and very much connected to the personal mission that we've all been given. Now, I believe, and I've said this a bazillion times, but I think it's the truth, that our mission here on earth is to help other people. And how we do that, that's, that's the divine, you figuring out that whole thing. That's your connection with God. He'll call it out to you. He called it out to me, you know, and I look back on my life and I see over and over and over and over again, this little piece here, that little piece there, this all prepared me for sitting right here in this chair right now and talking to you. It did. It prepared me. It showed me the way. It gave me answers. It clicked in. It, it was a custom fit. It gave me purpose. It gave me a hot desire to be all that I can be and to bring as many women as I could into my little circle simply because I knew that the conventionality of all the junk that's out there, all this, you know, hip hop, um, garbage, modern, flippy flip kind of philosophies and, and, you know, all this other kind of garbage, it just didn't fit. We need to find our own way. We need to be self-reliant enough that we can believe our hearts when they tell us something we need to hear. You know, connecting to our own beautiful self, our own beautiful self. <laughs> That's where our soul resides. And there's a higher you there. There's your wisdom. You know, we, I believe we all have like this, this, wisdom of the ages all inside of us. I believe God put it in there. It's a matter of tapping, tapping, tapping into it, connecting to it, opening up and being, you know, oh, here I am, God, you know, here I am. I'm willing, I'm able to show me and it will just announce itself. I mean, it will come knocking at your door. That's how amazing it is when this happens to us. So, you know, <laughs> this is what happens to us when we stop the carousel of crazy. And the carousel of crazy is worrying about what the scale says. The carousel of crazy is worrying about, you know, what's on sale at Target? Whoa, there's Netflix and oh, my phone. And it's when we stop all of that and recognize our higher selves, our that's what God, God is connecting to that. He's not connecting to our, our crazy making at all. We can't. I want you to see this for yourself because who you are needs to be fed. That part of yourself needs to be fed. That's the hungriest part you have. You know, it's not about what's in the fridge. It's not about rattling through the cupboards. It's not about trying to get your next food fix. Yeah, we get really knocked into that stuff and we get addicted into all of that thing. And the reason I believe that we do is because we're ignoring our beautiful selves. We're not feeding that part of ourselves that need feeding. So, <laughs> you know, remember how it is when you are in the place of being really hungry and you're like, your fast is over and you're going, yeah, my fast is over. I'm hungry. <laughs> I mean, I am really, really hungry. It's time to eat. Let your soul all the time saying, hey, remember me? Okay, I got your scale, get it. 
I know that you're preoccupied with the kids. I know your husband needs this, that, and the other thing. I know all of that, but remember me? I'm the one who is directing everything. I'm the one that's being left behind. I'm the one that loves and needs and supports you. And I need some something for myself. So how do we do this? Well, I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what. And, and you know, I'm sorry if you've heard this before, but I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to tell you what. This is, this is stuff that you need to include in your personalized program. Because this is, I'm not asking you to do it my way. I'm asking you to just add these things. What it's going to look like, you get to color it, you know. I'm giving you a coloring book. I'm giving you a whole pack of crayons. Now go color. And nobody can tell you to go out. You want to go outside the lines? Go outside the lines. You want to color a plant purple? Do it. I'm just saying that these are the things that need to be part of the equation because this is what feeds your soul. And the number one thing is meditation. Yeah. So there's a Bible verse in the Psalms that says, be still and know that I am God. And that is a phenomenal thing to meditate on because when we're still, we're connecting. When we're still, we can hear. When we're still, we can see. When we're still, we have, we're saying we're closing down all the apps on our phones. We're shutting down the laptop. We're not on Facebook anymore. We're connecting. We're being still and we're breathing and we're recognizing that even our breath is sacred to God. Can you imagine? Can you imagine that kind of a silent connection? Just the silence and the connection and the love and the warmth, all of that. And I'm going to ask you to give it a try for five minutes to just sit in silence and think about that one small little itty bitty verse. Be still and know that I am God. Stillness is something that just is peace. You look out on the lake, and last night, the lake before we went out on it, it was just glass, peace. Stillness, quiet in the house, the stillness in our hearts, in our minds, with our God, that connection is just undeniable, and it's divine. And this is where we get to start. So let's try to commune with that. And that is our communion with God. And it is our blessed opportunity and privilege to do so. And it's available at any time. At any time, we can just sit and be. How many times do we just sit and be? We're always doing, doing, doing. And doing is important. We've got to prep and prepare and do and la, 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 la. We do. But we also have to sit and be because when we sit and we be, we're connecting and we're recognizing and acknowledging this beautiful self of ours. Number two is to journal. Let's talk it out because inside of our brains is this jumble of stuff. You, me, everybody in between. I don't know of anybody that doesn't have a jumble. We're always straightening things out. This we keep, this we discard. This is an old belief. This is that. But when we write it out, we're able to see in black and white what's what. Because sometimes we kind of hold on to this old belief that is just absolute crap and stupid and dumb and old and outdated because it's just a habit. But if we write it out, we can look at it and go, holy moly, what's going on here? That's got to go. Because sometimes it takes that kind of a thing to do. Our journals are there to support this vibrant life that we're trying to lead, period. There's moments where we need to record them, like victory. Look what I did. A defeat. Oh, my gosh. And finding the lessons and just absolutely celebrating all the little things about it. Our brains hold a mass of stuff. So what? It's like opening the Tupperware cupboard and just everything flying out, you know? Sometimes you got to find a lid for the container. Otherwise, the lid's got to go into the recycling bin. Amen? This is us. We're all like that. And that's nothing to be ashamed of. It's just an acknowledgement of how much stuff is in there. Let's, let's just do this. A jumble journal. I love that. Who said jumble journal? Jema did. 
love the title. Do that. Do that. Write a jumble journal. Let's get it out. This is like, okay, so the other thing that I think about when I think about all of this, it's like when we're putting it all out there, we give our brains the ability to sort through things. So it's like doing the spiritual laundry. You would never, doing the laundry, you're never going to take the black socks and put it in with the white towels and throw a bunch of bleach in there and stuff, would you? No. We know better. We know how to sort our laundry. We need to sort our thoughts too. That's what a journal does. It sorts it out and it shows us, hey, those are black socks. They need to go in that bin over there. You get it? Isn't that fun? I love thinking about things that I do all the time. So if we understand this, we understand the concepts of these things, we can go beyond all of this business and get into the things that really matter and we can sort them properly. This is so much. It, and Lucy says, oh my, so much jumble in my brain. Yeah, same here, Lucy, same here. We're all in this together. It's part of the human equation. It is, it is. And I think we need to not punish ourselves or, or shame ourselves about it. I think we celebrate it and just say, you know, the jumble's in there, but it can be straightened out a little bit at a time, a little bit at a time. And when we're done straightening out all the jumble, we're probably going to go home and be with God. <laughs> That's probably what's going to happen. It's just amazing. That is so beautiful, Sarah. She said, for those startling, starting journaling, just use dashes and sentence fragments. Don't feel like you need to be an eloquent novelist. Absolutely. And sometimes you just drop some words. I do. I just drop a word. I just drop a whatever. But if it's there, I let it go. And when I'm meditating, I keep my journal open in case something comes to my brain so I can drop that there and go back to meditating. But it all works together. These are just little tiny exercises that we do to acknowledge our, our beingness, our lovingness, our beautiful selves, and who we really are wrapped up in these bodysuits. <laughs> it's just who we are. And then number three is we've got to pray. And I'm going to tell you right now, speaking of, of <laughs> dashes and sentence fragments, pray. You don't, nobody, you have no audience that you're praying to. You don't have to be eloquent. Oh, Lord, and, and high, I'm mighty, and decorate this sentence and decorate that sentence. It's just your communication with the divine. And it's yours. And it's intimate. And it's personal. And it's how you do it. You might do it. You might have Motown blasting on the, and, and singing and just saying, thank you, God, for this music. Might be part of your thing. However you pray, just pray. It's an acknowledgement of who made us in the first place. That's it. It's what it is. And it's just saying, you know what? You're pretty cool, God. You're pretty amazing. You blow me away. I go out into, into the nature and what do I see? <laughs> Incredibleness. We communicate the way we communicate. You know, we don't, we're not psalmists. We're humans right here in this 21st century. We're doing it the way we do it. Allow for that. Don't beat yourself up, but just allow. It's an acknowledgement. And you know what? He's, he's a whole lot bigger than we, than we think and so much more loving than we know. I think there's going to be a connection there. Number four is create. I love this part because remember how I said we are the creators of our own lives? We are. We've been given this privilege, and it's divine, by the way. We get to create what it is that we want. We create it with every single choice that we make, every single thing that we do. And our creation, the creating thing is, you know, it has an effect on you, me, everyone around us. When we create our lives, we're creating a ripple effect that just goes beyond what we even know. Did you know that? Every once in a while, somebody will send me a testimonial and say, the time that you said this, blah, 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 it just changed everything. I was like, what did I even say? I don't even remember. But that's the kind of ripple effect that we have with our words, with the kindness that we give to even a stranger that they won't forget. We have the ability to light lives up. That's what we do when we create. We're creating a, a tsunami of love here if we choose. Number five is eat real food. You knew I was going to say that, right? <laughs> I, and I'm going to talk to you about this because, you know, food is information for your body. 
But the spiritual food you're consuming is important too. We need all the necessary nutrients for life, for this bodysuit that we carry around, and for our souls. We need that. And you know, there's no shortcut to real. You can't do it with junk food. You know, you can't. I, I know I've heard people say um, over and over, oh, you know, eat the healthy choices at, you know, fill in the blank fast food place. And I say, get out of there. <laughs> you know, that's not real food. I promise you, that's not real food. We need real food for our bodies. We need real food for our souls. So decide on real, dump the fake non-nutrient stuff. Drop the mindsets that don't work. That's not food for your mind. Drop the stuff that is just garbage, you know, piled on old whatever from the past of what you think about how God views you and start going with the truth of how much he loves you. Start there. Start there. That's real nutrients. That's real food, heart, mind, body, and soul. That's what we need. So understand that, you know, yeah, at the end of all of this, at the end of our lives, what is it? Vibrancy is the prize. But every single choice we make is the pathway to vibrancy. And is it's created with every little vibrant brick that we put down. And exactly what it is, Sarah said it, what you focus on expands, nourish and flourish. It's totally it. It's totally it. Whatever we water, we're going to get back in abundance. So if those seeds of resentment, if you're watering that, mm, it's going to come back. But if you're planting seeds of happiness, seeds of love, seeds of care, seeds of enduring um, everything, I don't know, enduring is the word I came up with. I want the enduring love of God in my life. I want the enduring love of my family. I want a community that I can just say, I adore adore you and you're in my life and it means everything to me because it does that's what i want that's what we're building here that's what we're about and you are a part of it and that to me is everything it is everything and i thank you for that because you're creating the path to your own life just as i am to mine and when we get to circle the wagons and be together and feed our hearts like this we get to live that <laughs> elevated life. We get to be in that rising tide. And all those little boats go lift, 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 lift all the way up. All together. What a fabulous thing. Isn't it? It's fabulous. So what I will say to you is this. Life is a grand buffet of choice, isn't it? It is how you are going to choose and what you're going to choose to put on your plate, that is entirely up to you, entirely. But my hope, my prayer, my wish for you is that you choose wisely because what I know is this, your vibrant life depends on it because every choice you make can be a vibrant one. And when we do this, our lives are unrecognizable from the old stuff to the brand new stuff. And you want this newness, this brand new life. I know you do. That's what I'm about to. So amen. I'm so, so happy that you're here. And I, I know that you are going to love our Full Bloom um, workshop coming up on Saturday, April 24th. It is all day long. Go check it out at savingdinner.com forward slash bloom and go get yourself registered if you would. We are... I mean, I can't tell you, we're just bursting at the seams over this. It is going to be something that is going to really unite us as a group, and it's going to feed all of us. We need it. And I thank you for joining me today. It's been my pleasure and, and my purpose and, you know, my real, my real privilege to do so. I will tell you that tomorrow I am dark. <laughs> I won't be here. I'll probably be out on the lake playing pickleball or whatever. <laughs> Oh, Nancy, I adore you. I do. I adore every single one of you. You mean all so much to me. Every single one of you. I know who you are. I know what you're about. And I love you. Period. So I'm just saying that. I want you to know that. I will see you, uh, though. I will see you on Monday for Motivational Monday. I've got a show already planned. I hope I remember it. It was in the bathroom putting on makeup that I had that. I was like, oh, that's what we're going to do. 
<laughs> Sunday is Monday indeed. So I will see you on Monday. Take care of yourself. If you need anything from us, do reach out. We love you. Peace be with you. Thanks for watching. You can find us on YouTube on the Saving Dinner channel or on the Saving Dinner Facebook page. Check back daily for new episodes, Monday to Saturday at 1 p.m. Eastern. If you missed the live show, you can watch the replay. Until next time, pinkies up.